Australia is one of the oldest continents. In the dimness of its ancient past, the wind and the rain wore down its mountains. This erosion has exposed many ore-bearing formations. Already, a variety of mineral deposits have been found and developed. Millions have been won from the earth. Millions more are waiting for the finding. And that is where the Commonwealth Bureau of Mineral Resources comes in. Today, geologists from the Bureau are making surveys over the three million square miles that make up the continent. The search is intensified with the dawn of the atomic age. Three million square miles is a tough proposition, so geologists take to the air. A plane operated by the Bureau carries up-to-date scientific instruments to detect the presence of minerals. A magnetometer up a couple of thousand feet still reacts to the variations in magnetism beneath the Earth's surface. This wide survey allows geologists to chart probable areas containing mineral deposits and indicate subsurface conditions. Unprofitable areas are eliminated, a saving of time and energy and even lives in a country where prospectors can still die of thirst. The pioneers prospected on foot, but today more modern methods are used. There are no roads out back, but these vehicles adapt themselves to any type of country. Coal is found in all states, but is most abundant in New South Wales. Most mining is underground, and many mines use mechanical means to extract the ore. The industrial expansion in World War II set a demand that the underground mines could not supply. Open cut mines were therefore rapidly developed and great quantities of coal were taken from these in the eastern states. Isolated on the western boundary of New South Wales lies Broken Hill, where in 1883 a fabulous load of lead, silver and zinc was discovered. Known as the Silver City, Broken Hill now has a population of over 30,000 people and has produced over 65 million tons of ore. From Broken Hill, zinc concentrates are sent to Tasmania, Europe and America, while the lead concentrates are railed to the smelters at Port Piri in South Australia, where silver, gold, copper, arsenic, antimony and zinc are separated from the lead. Set on the edge of the lush Barclay tablelands, but just as isolated as Broken Hill, is Mount Isa in northern Queensland. The Mount Isa mine, another large producer of lead, silver and zinc, was developed in wartime to produce much needed copper. From the same shaft, lead, zinc and copper ores are taken to the smelters. Up to 1953, however, the bulk of Australia's copper came from Mount Lyell in Tasmania, the most southerly state in the Commonwealth. Mount Lyell was discovered in 1885 by gold prospectors, and it was not until 1891 that the area was recognized as a huge copper deposit. The basic material of heavy industry is steel, and in her rapid development, Australia has been much aided by rich deposits of iron ore in South Australia and Yampi Sound. 
Steelworks are situated at Port Kembla and Newcastle, New South Wales. Iron Monarch in South Australia is the greatest producer of iron ore, pouring enormous wealth into the Australian iron and steel industry. Now, a new source of iron ore has been developed at Cockatoo Island on the northwest coast of Western Australia. The Broken Hill Proprietary Limited has built a township, wharves and crushing plant. The ore contains about 63% of iron and is mined in an open cut at the eastern end of the island. This boom was designed to facilitate easy loading. The ore is shipped to the blast furnaces of Newcastle, New South Wales and Port Kembla, south of Sydney. These cargoes are part of the nation's lifeblood, for Australia produces the world's cheapest steel. And that's something in a world of keen economic competition. The Port Kembla blast furnace is one of the largest in the world. Australia is the largest producer of rutile, one of the ores used to make titanium. The sands of the east coast contain large quantities of rutile, ilmenite, zircon and other modern age minerals. Separation takes place right on the beach. The white sand, being the lightest, is washed away, leaving the heavier black sand for further treatment. Bleak King Island in Bass Strait, midway between the mainland and Tasmania, supplies the world with great quantities of shelite. More than a million tons of shelite, from which tungsten is obtained, is mined each year. It is crushed and ground, and then separated on vibrating tables. Oil has recently been discovered at Exmouth Gulf in Western Australia. The extent and richness of the field is not yet known, but the Australian Bureau of Mineral Resources believes this area to be most promising. World attention was directed to Australia in 1949 when uranium was discovered in the Northern Territory by prospector Jack White and many private and government geologists are searching for this mineral. Several fields are being developed and Radium Hill in South Australia has already contracted to supply quantities to the British United States Combined Development Agency. The Bureau of Mineral Resources keeps its survey plane flying. A scintillometer registers radioactive radiations given off by uranium-bearing minerals. Radar equipment pinpoints the exact spot, and ground parties can then make more accurate tests. Millions for the finding. Prospects are bright as a young nation rises to meet the new atomic age. <laughs> 